We are very busy, as you can probably tell behind me. I've got three engines on stands. I've got four cars in here. I've got about five more in the front lot. Liam is busy wiring a Link ECU for a car that we have been working on for quite some time. I think we are pretty close. We can go take a look at that first. Rotated turbo, 6266. It's the same turbo I have on the BMW. It'll make 600 plus horsepower. He was on a stock ECU with like a 30 or $40,000 engine build. Honestly, at this point, especially on the modern ones, if you are putting that much money, give it a brat. Sounds good at least. 30 or $40,000 engine build in this thing. I mean, it was not on a Link ECU or any standalone. It was on the factory Subaru ECU, but it was running Cobb Next Gen Flex Fuel with a rotated kit without cats on it. So it always throw the PO420 and throw the car into limp mode. Moronic. It's moronic that you'd spend this much money and not go standalone originally during the build, but we are here to fix that. We've been having some weird idle issues with it since he brought it into us. We didn't do the original swap, but with the original swap, it should have been on a standalone to begin with, with this kind of build that we have here. It's a closed deck IAG block. Again, 6266 rotated, made about 35 pounds of boost, made about 600 and some change on the dyno, but you're limited to the, what the factory ECU can do in this scenario. For all intents and purposes, when you build a Subaru like this, it should be considered a race car. It is so far from stock that the extra features and functionality you get with a standalone ECU are kind of almost necessary. So the car was tuned on Cobb, which is a good platform, but for something this modified, didn't really make a whole lot of sense. Anyways, with the green speed and the next gen flex fuel stuff, it would still throw a catalyst efficiency code. It would still run, but the car would constantly be going into limp mode because it doesn't have a cat. For all intents and purposes, this is a dedicated race track car. So we are converting it finally to Link ECU. We get some better functionality in it. We get some more safety with it so we're hooking up fuel pressure we're running the link hand lambda and we're linking an oil pressure directly into the ecu so we can set safeties so if the car starts to run lean if we lose fuel pressure if we lose oil pressure the ecu will try and save the engine from failure Factory ECU, although it does have some safeties in it, doesn't quite match the level that we can do with a standalone. We are uh, mid-process, I guess you could say. He went around the track a couple times, you know, and hit a really, really gnarly bump. And suddenly we noticed the air pump was gone. The air pump fell off the car. The TGVs fell off the car. The EVAP fell off the car. The catalyst fell off the car. So we're just working around that. It was a really big bump. So we are uh, taking this dedicated track car and putting a track oriented, race oriented ECU in it to uh, resolve some other issues we were experiencing on the stock ECU. Got our nice, beautiful Precision 6266 and uh, our nice billet, we'll call them intake manifold spacers. Those right there, those beautiful aluminum pieces, they just appeared. Beautiful spacers. There's no uh, more pesky EVAP stuff, air pump. I don't know, it's somewhere on the track, but we're gonna take care of that. Don't worry, it's gonna be fine. We still have a crew searching for it. 24 hours day they've been out there for a week and they have yet to find it so we'll find it if not the car will still run great anyways liam is in the process of wiring hell the link ecu is a plug and play it's a board that replaces the factory one inside the enclosure there's some drilling and some holes we got to make but then also we have to wire in certain sensors the flex fuel being one uh, we're wiring in the fuel pressure directly into the ecu and oil pressure directly into the ecu so that way we can actually have limits and triggers and safeties for those things. i know my fucking box is a Fuck you. Liam is the messiest tech I've ever worked with. Once you done or do you want me to fucking spend 20 years cleaning? I want it done because Brandon needs this car back to go to the racetrack on Thursday. Trailer to the racetrack. Anyways, the ECUs are a bit different in this car. From every Subaru, from like the dawn of time, the ECU sits in the where the passenger's feet sit in the floorboard area. This one is like stuck way up in the dash, so Liam has been having a really good time. Our ECU sits up there in this car. So normally it's down here where your feet sit, but no, they moved it up here, I think in the 2015 plus model years. So Liam's having a great time. I guess we should check his cabin filter while it's here. Hey Brandon, I think it's time we put a cabin air filter in your car, bro. It's good for another 10K. We will have it wired up and quote unquote done today, but we need some tuning help to get this wrapped up. What's, what's that in your hands, Steven? <laughs> the groove on the air pump, dude. <laughs> we can put it in now. Oh, here. It doesn't fit. It took them two days to find that, dude. <laughs> it's, it's a race car. 
It's a race car. Next on our rotation of shit. GTR has some fancy new valve covers. Finally, this guy, a local dealership installed an engine, said it just needed tuning. Heads up, if you ever find a Facebook listing for a modified vehicle, the listing, the description of the listing says just needs tuning. That's the biggest fucking fat lie on the internet, period. It always needs more than tuning. It's usually something mechanically broken with it before anything else. So if you ever see a car that says just need tuning, do not buy it. And if you bring it here, expect to spend a lot of money to get fixed. So anyways, dealership local to us installed said engine. Dealerships don't like to do the modified car stuff. When you flash Cobb tuners to these things, their Subaru Select Monitor doesn't work properly. They said it needs a tune. Well, it does, but there's a mechanical issue with it as well. So we have a set of ignition coils coming for this. I have an access port for it. We'll be pro tuning this baby, get her out the door. This one, full race spec, bro. Actually, I have two in right now, two SCCA cars. It's got some goodies on it. Full cage seats. We pulled the engine out of it because it is supercharged. One session on the track afterwards, it would just plume smoke as soon as you start it. So we're digging into that. Valve stem seals and some other work. There's a supercharger in the trunk. Big boy, the most badass radium fuel system in it ever. Has a freaking scavenge pump for the fuel system. So we are in the process of this one. This one won't be done for a while. It's at cylinder head machine place getting stuff done. This one was a Graham tune, ran good for a while. I think we've actually already fixed it, but he went to get dyno tune done, was running lean up top. We did a smoke test on it, smoke test passed. Then we pulled the intake out, cleaned the filters out, and we know some mass airflow was disgusting. So we cleaned that, took it for a test drive. And I think we have resolved it. I'm just waiting for some log review to see if we have actually fixed the thing or not, but it runs pretty decent now. I think we're done with this one, but VRZ is probably my favorite autocross track car to date, hands down. They're awesome. You can row through three gears and not get a felony level speeding ticket in it. You know they make an ITV setup for these? That wouldn't shock me. All the NA cars probably have setups like they that. Make... It replaces the whole factory intake manifold. And they bowl ITBs on the front on top of them. And then they put the electronic throttle body in the center of the ITBs and they attach a bracket to it and it pulls. So it, you just All hit it regularly and it will literally run on the stock ECU. It sounds really weird. expensive for not a whole lot of gain. It looks really <laughs> fucking weird, but it sounds cool and probably really it's a, it's expensive. Really the red 14 point in, bone stock, baby. 170 something thousand miles on it. We've got a couple things to do to it. It's throwing a PO420, for, which is catalyst efficiency, but at 170K, this doesn't shock me. Usually the stock catalysts give up around 130 to 150K. For the cost of a stock catalyst from Subaru, which is about $4,500 before labor, that's just the part. So add another $250 in labor to install it, plus diag, like we're talking five grand. So for five grand, we're fixing a cam sensor issue. We're going cold air intake, high flow catted downpipe, access port and tuning for five Gs. Not only will we fix the problems, but the car will be faster in the end and run better. Guess what you get to do? All of that. That Ranger looks really fire from this angle. V6 too, it's a nice one. The only problem is it's automatic. If it was a manual V6, dude, he should have just manual swapped it. It'd be worth more money. And the paint's actually nice. Aftermarket. But we blew a transmission up in it, probably because he's running 33s on that tiny little fucking, I'm assuming four speed automatic. It's pretty sick, what do you think? It's gonna blow up another transmission. Just yeah. wait. Well, how much it wiggles because the tires. <laughs> Fun part about these installs is what Link gives you is a pinout, and then taking that pinout and actually going to the OEM pinouts because we have TGVs still, but we're not using the connectors because Cobb does things for them. I need to figure out what pin is what on this connector here so that I can send another signal down this wire because it's no longer being used for anything for my fuel pressure because it makes it a lot easier to just reuse this connector than run a new one into the cabin. So yeah, I get to figure that part out. That one's pretty easy, power and ground, but then I gotta figure out which one's the signal wire and which one's fun times. Time to get the multimeter, yay. I gotta figure out which wire connects to what because that little harness, they are all the same color. So you can't easily trace them. This top left one needs to be power. I doubt that it is. Verify, stick in here. I'm on continuity on my meter. Do that. We'll do this. Okay, cool. That is my power wire. Now I need my ground, which should be this top left wire. It should be my center wire. And then this should be my third. Perfect. So now they are pinned correctly. I wish I could tell you Link ECU installs are like super glamorous and really cool, and they are, but the actual work is just tedious as f 
you ever talk to a boomer, ask them about E85, they're gonna lose their shit. Guarantee you, boomers hate E85. Yeah, go up to a uh, high V and get yourself some of that uh, non-ethanol fuel. It burns better. Ironically, Subarus, the factory ECU tuning, are expecting the like 10% ethanol in standard 91 octane, even on the stock maps. But they actually like expect that ethanol in the tank, so they don't run as well, in my opinion, if you stick regular non-ethanol 91 in them. The more you know. People act like E85 is like the worst thing ever. It's gonna like eat all the fuel lines in your car. It'll damage all the fuel lines in the hose. Like, bro, well, back in the day, the, the fuel lines that they had weren't ethanol rated. What they are saying is true to an extent. If the car is like before 1995, 1999 era, like before the 2000s, it can damage it. But every single modern car has fuel lines that can handle ethanol. Every single one. All the boomers are still stuck in the fucking 70s. We've had 50 years to figure it out, okay? It is so convenient to have a powder coating company across the street. It's the second or third item we've had done by them and they kill it every single time. Every single time they nail it. So if you need powder coating, go to Genesis Cross Street. They're great. Beautiful, beautiful red. And we had them, originally they were gonna do this whole thing, but we had to mask this off and clean it up so it man makes it pop. The only thing I do differently is I'd like the RB26 to be kind of like this. But dude, before and after, this thing looks amazing. Now we just gotta assemble it all sometime. It was originally built, I think, two years ago now. I think the owners put like over 20,000 miles on it so far. Can you believe he daily drives this car? I thought you said this was a track car. He daily drives it on the track. $30,000 bill from the original builder and they put water in the radiator. Just straight water. There wasn't, there's like maybe a slight tinge of blue in it. Someone had filled the expansion tank with actual coolant, but the whole fucking car is filled with water. Imagine like if it had actually frozen or if you didn't drive it every day. So imagine if it wasn't parked in the garage. Oh my God. Then the shop who did it has the audacity to talk shit on us. You took 30 fucking grand and then you put water in the radiator and then you try and tell the customer that we have no idea what we're doing. Like, dude, you put water in a $30,000 engine build. You fucking morons. And then you talk shit. Let's we'll say 90% of the work was solid, but like, how can, that's like just a blatant oversight. How do you do that? It's one of the big benefits of going standalone is we have proper wideband fuel control instead of like the factory narrow band that doesn't really read as low as we need it to. E93 series owners out there, you bring the car in because you need service because the car has 30 different check engine codes and six different oil leaks. My favorite is when they come in with the valve cover leaking, the oil filter housing gasket leaking, the oil pan leaking, it needs an accessory belt, it needs six injectors, and they're like, can you put on catalyst downpipes for me? Every time, every time. And I tell them it needs all of these other things to be safe, and they're like, I don't have the money. And they never do. The number of times I've had E90s come in that they bought them for cheap and they don't have any money, and then I give them a $5,000 repair bill because it needs all the maintenance that's been deferred for five years, and then they just drive away and never see them again. So before you call me asking to modify your E90 or your E series or F series BMW, we should probably inspect it first because you probably have some maintenance to do because they're cheap. People get these cars for like less than eight grand sometimes. And they're like, oh yeah, it's a, it's a European 2J. Comes in and needs like misfiring check engine light, 30 different codes. And it's like at least five grand to get it like actually running properly. So they're like, oh no, I want to do intakes and a MHD tune and downpipes, like everything else. I'm like, okay. And I own one, I own an E90. I know exactly what it's like. But y'all make the y'all make it look bad. Okay, if you're watching this right now, this is what happens when you do a full ECU install. It gets a little messy. Don't bully me. Can bus is installed for the can lambda. It's ready for a heat cycle. So I'll give you a gist of the wiring we've done. I've run this down here. You can't even see it. We have our flex fuel kit. Flex fuel sensor is down buried. Runs all the way back through the grommet back here to the ECU. We have that wired in. I have a can lambda device, which will run all of our wideband fuel trims and everything. That's plugged in here. Got fuel pressure that runs from all the way over here and is plugged in the TGV ports over here, piggyback. So that works. Just going ahead and using our stuff we already have that we don't have to wire in extra stuff and run stuff through. It's already up here. That's wired in. We have our new harness in. We have our modified runners with all the stuff swapped over to them. We've got a few other things pulled off the motor that we don't need anymore because it's going to be a track car. Nothing really crazy left, luckily. We don't use the MAF anymore because this car has been converted to speed density and Lynx will only run speed density. They'll run MAF as like if you have to, you can run a backup just to give an idea how much air you're flowing, but mainly speed density. And so we'll log in with Graham here and start getting going on this thing. I've wired in our oil pressure, so that's able to be read in the ECU so we can set up some safeties if need be. Say oil pressure gets below five PSI at idle, it'll shut the car off, that kind of stuff, because I'd rather not have to put a motor in this thing and nuke the whole engine if it just needs rod bearings. 
You ready? <laughs> oh. The moment I put the clutch switch down, it fires. This car, it did seem to run a good bit better on these. It still idles goofy, but I have a bad feeling they nick one of the valves in the head. And so we're gonna find out on the standalone and make sure that's not the case. They revved this thing to like 8,900 on stock valve train. He said they had issues on the dyno with it. I know they did pulls and he says he's never touched the rev limiter. From what he was saying, they revved to like 85 on the dyno, if not more than that. From what I understand, that's pretty spicy on stock heads and it's never ran well since they pulled it off the dyno. They did a whole ton of revisions on it to try to get it to work right and it just never has. We'll see how it goes, I guess, but hopefully we don't have any issues. Yeah. It's got new coils, it's got new plugs, new okay. injectors. She's on, she's idling. Sick. That. I need a little bit more idle control, maybe. Mm -hmm. It's kind of settling out now. So yeah, there it goes. Maybe it's just kind of hiccuping a little bit. It's pretty decently steady at the moment. Yeah, it seems to be holding 1250, 1000 to 1250 is, seems pretty decent. Oh yeah, we cranked the fuel pressure up on this thing. I'm trying to get it to idle right before. Yeah. It is idling better than it ever has. That's good right there. It's Perfect. 24. I'll lock it down. It idles so much better. The saving grace this car needed from day one. Give her a brat. Oh yeah, we got a big bubble. This is the cheater method. We don't have a second tank on it, so I'm squeezing the upper radiator hose and pushing the air through the expansion tank. Okay, perfect. Sounds good. I appreciate it, dude. Right. I'm gonna go drive it. That is such a massive W. It's not button buttoned up, but I want to go drive it. Here. Keep an eye on the coolant temp. It already idles so much better. It genuinely drives so much better. And all I've done is leave the parking lot. She's a noisy girl, though. Yes. Yes. Such a huge win, bro. No idea. I mean, obviously, it's on a face map, so it's not like the mintiest thing ever, but it is leaps and bounds better than it ever has been. The blips are crisp. I've had this car apart two or three different times in the engine day trying to chase like this idle problem. We redid the injector harnesses because it has aftermarket injectors. We had us hardwire the pigtails in because the previous shop had done that. Cam sensors, an engine wiring harness. We did the link, modified runners for the intake. We raised the fuel pressure to try to get it to idle right just a little bit higher than we like to just because we were out of options. Some of this is like drivability, just like let the throttle off too quick. We got to dial in on the dyno, like the fuel cut, how long it takes to fuel cut, because it's a daily dial in some of that stuff. In. Got a really big clutch in it. I mean, this thing made 640 plus with this setup on stock ECU. It was moving. It has never, ever run this good. It blips perfectly, it comes down from idle just about perfect. It drives so good. That was worth the money and the time. Kinda messed up, didn't get a formal outro for the 19 STI I did a Link ECU on. We were gonna get some video of it in Iowa doing some tuning sometime next month. TBD, parts. Uh, I'm a wholesaler for basically every reputable and good to use brand on Subaru Performance Aftermarket Parts, basically on the planet. So if you need parts, call me. Otherwise, <sighs> see you later. Please like and subscribe on the video because otherwise, I'm killing him. He likes male attention. He's a good boy.